Hi everyone, it's Meredith with Soul Navigation, your evolutionary astrologer, and I'm so happy to kick off my new series today. It's called Soulmate or Stalemate. So we're going to look at the compatibility for each and every combination. It's going to take me a little while to get through, but today, oh my gosh, lucky, lucky Aquarians, right? Here is, you know, tea is my new wine. <laughs> Are you proud of me? I'm like 35 days of drinking tea. Anyways, here's cheers. Cheers to my Aquarians. Mm. I got all super fancy for you today in my ski cap and um, <laughs> just back in from a jog. But because in my Aquarius Rising, if you haven't seen that video, it's called The Madness and Genius of Aquarius Rising. Go check it out just because the Aquarians showed up at my fancy gala in a ski sweater. I thought this is the least likely sign to mind that I'm wearing my leprechaun ski cap. And so I'm just doing it. I'm bringing it for my Aquarians because you guys are the least non judgmental. We are going to dive in. What is a soulmate versus a stalemate? Well, there are combinations in astrology that are easier than other combinations. And uh, I am fun and I am funny, but I'm also really, really deep. And so I'm going to give you the true skinny and I'm going to break it down for you in a way that I've noticed a lot of other people don't. There's so many stereotypes like, oh, you know, Leos and Sages are the best combination. Woo. You know, but there's so much more to it. And I want to teach you. I want you to learn. I want you to know how you can read your charts. And I absolutely loved what Henny from Team Soul Navigation. Have you guys met my team yet? Oh my God, they're amazing. Well, you have to meet Henny. One of the things that he said is, is when you know where another person's son sits in your chart, you can see the alchemy of that relationship or where you know any other planet and where your soulmate's uh, planetary lineup is in your own chart. So where is their Aquarius sun or where is their Aquarius moon or where is their Aquarius rising or where is their Aquarius Mars or Venus in your chart? And that is going to show you the magic and the magical powers inside your relationship. And I'm here to help you crack that code. Let's go dive in. Okay, just because I am who I am, who I am, who I am, and I can't really do surface astrology, first, I have to talk to you a little bit about Aquarians, and I really do recommend after this video, you go check out my Aquarius Rising, my Everything Aquarius, and my Aquarius in Love video. You will love it, and it's just chock full of myth busters and uh, the deeper side of Aquarius, but you already know, I'm just going to do a quick recap. You already know that Aquarians are born between January 21st and February 19th. And um, this video is actually for anyone who has their uh, Mars, their rising, their sun, their Venus, um, even their Mercury or their moon in Aquarius. Okay. So I'm going to be primarily talking about sun signs, but I want you to know that it's important that you have a good moon matchup. It's important that you have a good rising sign matchup. It's important that you have, <laughs> that you have a good Venus Mars matchup. Okay. So if you have, um, a really strong or 11th house, if you have a really strong 11th house with tons of planets in the 11th house, you're going to want to watch this video and you're going to see that some sun signs are easier to get along with than others. But right now, I also want you to think about it this way. If you have an Aquarius moon, but you're a Leo and you're involved with somebody who has an Aquarius rising, you want to watch this video. So if you've got your Aquarius in any of the um, primary planets. And so that is the rising sign, the sun, the moon, Mercury, Venus, or Mars, or a lot of planets in the 11th house. This video is for you. So maybe your sun signs don't get along, but you know what? Maybe your moons do. Maybe your Venuses do. 
and that says something. So let's go back. Aquarians are fixed masculine or yang energy. They are producers. They like to produce things. They push outwards rather than receive. They're givers, doers, um, and that's the yang masculine energy. They're ruled by Uranus, but they're also ruled by Saturn, and Saturn is the old ruler. What is their color in the color spectrum? It is actually the entire spectrum. Yep, their jewel is opal, and their day is Saturday, and their archangel is Uriel. Mm hmm. Isn't that interesting? You gotta love that. So, if we don't know each other yet, it's my pleasure to introduce myself to you. I hope that we do, and leave me a comment below if this is your very first video that you've ever seen on the Soul Navigation channel. And I hope you'll go watch my whole library of videos. I've loaded over 200 videos, and it is my goal as your evolutionary astrologer to go deeper and richer and give you the gritty, raw truth. And uh, I like to go beyond sun sign astrology, and I like to go way beyond the surface. So we're going to do that in this new series. By the way, tell me what sign you want me to do next, because I'm going to go through all 12 signs. Today, we're going to go through all of the signs for Aquarius, and which signs make the easiest soulmates, which signs make the best and easiest romantic partners, life partners, marriage partners, and soul connections that come with simplicity and ease. So you already know that Aquarians are friendly and curious and freedom loving and freedom seeking, and they're a little bit impersonable, you know, uh, I should say in per they're a little bit impersonal, but they are warm. And, um, but funny saying that, they're also kind of like a cool cat, right? They're a little bit like too cool for school sometimes, where they don't reveal, they don't gush, they don't ooze what they're feeling. They kind of keep it under wraps a little bit. They're very fascinating that way and interesting that way. And it's hard to get to know the inner molten hot lava of the core of the Aquarian, but it's really easy to have kind of um, a more surface level relationship with them or an intellectual relationship with them than it is. They, they're slow to reveal their vulnerabilities. There's a loyalty about them. They have millions of friends, but they are the loner in the midst of all of them. They have universal concerns and care, but they stay a little bit more remote or detached inside their own household's problems, right? <laughs> and they, they care a little bit more about maybe a movement rather than, you know, a, a, what a loved one is actually struggling with um, at home. They're very big picture and visionaries. They don't like following the rules. They obey the laws unto themselves. And they, they just don't want to follow someone else's orders. They're not followers. They blaze their own trails. And they're intellectual mavericks, to tell you the truth. Um, and they, Aquarians, want a soulmate or a life mate or a marriage mate or just a partner that does not bog them down, doesn't tie them down, trap you down, hold you down, you know, make you submit, make you back down. No. They do want love and they want warmth and just not suffocation. They want warmth, but they don't want to be suffocated. They cannot stand that. And you might feel that their embrace is one where they don't melt easily. They don't just melt easily, you know, into your arms like ice cream on a hot day. No. No, it takes a lot to melt them. They also are really unconventional. They don't need a conventional marriage. They don't need a traditional wedding. They don't need a traditional relationship. They don't need you to be Betty Crocker in the kitchen while they go off to the you know, office if they're the male. They don't need traditional roles. They're very unconventional and they can actually get turned on with the thought of, wow, the less I see you, the more I'm attracted. <laughs> 
mean, who says that and actually means it? Aquarian. So who is Aquarius's love match? I can't wait to tell you. Who is their very, very best? Uh, love match, soulmate, life mate, union, you know, who's easy for them? First, I got to tell you a couple secrets. One, um, if Aquarius is your, is your south node, I'll just tell you right now, dating your south node is the single hardest thing you could ever do in your whole entire life. I really highly don't recommend it, but if you have a south node sun relationship, meaning your partner's sun sign, sits on your south node or your partner's mars sits on your south node that's one of the hardest combinations ever and so if you're doing that like good for you you deserve a cheers you deserve a bless you you deserve like i bow down to you and you are real you're a better person than me because you're willing to work really hard in life but i have to say this aquarians can be with any sign that is emotionally mentally and spiritually fit someone who's truly healthy it's going to work it's just how hard do you want to work at it some relationships are easier than others and some relationships just create like an instant connection instant chemistry ease so aquarians have to have a relationship they have to have a partner that will give them their individual freedom, love their quirky idiosyncrasies, and we know they've got lots of them, and somebody who doesn't want you or need you to conform to their ways, but somebody who accepts you 1,000% in the <laughs> quirky, zany, wild things that you are. And I know that you might say, well, gosh, you know, don't most people want this? No, this is different. I mean, this is the code inside Aquarius that they cannot deny. This is what is in their soul that runs their show, that creates their desire. So Aquarians need mental and emotional and physical space more so than any other sign. So let's say you're a Cancer, but you've got your Venus and Mars in Gemini. Could it work? Possibly, because that Gemini is so good for Aquarius. We're gonna go dive in. First, oh my gosh, I have to tell you the most fun thing. I have the most fun news for us. I am holding an astrology party and I am inviting you. And I have to tell you all about it. Okay, it's gonna be on Saturday, December 5th. My notes say it's gonna be at 2 p.m. Pacific time, 5 p.m. Eastern time. It's 10 p.m. in London and it's 11 in Italy. And I'm so sorry for the people that uh, this affects in the middle of the night in the Middle East. I still want you to come, please, please, please. And over in Australia, please come join. Let me tell you what it's gonna be. It's gonna be game night with Team Soul Navigation and I'm gonna be there. I cannot wait. Okay, this is what we're gonna do. I want you to get all dolled up. Who knows who you'll meet? I can have 300 people at this party, but I don't know how many will come, but just come. Um, and we are gonna play astrology bingo. You're gonna get your chart and that's gonna be your bingo card. We at Team Soul Navigation are going to roll the dice and uh, every time you get a space, you only need five of them to get Kazemi. And Kazemi is what we're calling our bingo. So we are having Kazemi Bingo Astrology Night, but there's a twist. I want you guys to get dolled up for me and turn on your cameras because I want you guys to meet each other and have an opportunity for a meet and greet. We are gonna have so much fun. Guess what you're gonna win? You are gonna win free readings with my whole team. We are giving away seven free readings to seven lucky Kazemi winners and we are gonna have a blast. So what do you do? All you have to do is go to soulnavigation.com, click on the book now, go find my face and book a reading with Meredith and you, it will take you to my online scheduler and you scroll down for it and you will see Kazemi bingo party on Saturday, December 5th, 2 p.m. Pacific time and get dolled up for me. It's going to be actually 
a sexy Kazemi party because every combination we roll with our astro dice, so let's say we roll the dice and it's Leo um, in the fifth house and Mars. So it would be Leo and Mars in the fifth house. Whoever has that combination gets a space. You only need five, you only need five to win the Kazemi bingo and you're gonna win a 30 minute reading with one of the amazing, amazing readers at Team Soul Navigation. It's gonna be so much fun. So sign up and um, uh, I can take up to 300 people. It's gonna be a blast. We have nothing else to do, it's COVID, but doll up and come meet some new friends and it's gonna be via Zoom. So um, that all you need is your computer. I can't wait. Okay, let's go dive back into Aquarius. Okay, we're gonna do Aquarius with Aries. This can actually be a soulmate connection, but only if the Aries is really, really, really healthy and can get beyond their own agenda and out of their own sphere, their own life, their own ideas, their own passions, their own upsets, their own challenges, right? Because Aries is highly focused on self and Aquarius is highly focused on the world outside of themselves. And they're not focused on others like Libra. They're more focused on the world or on the collective, if you will, groups and organizations, people of like minds. And um, they, Aries is going to be challenged in, in a sense because um, Aries can be highly focused on their own agenda. And Aquarius is so broad-minded and so kind of out there that the uh, Aries can actually feel like Aquarius is a little bit of like not paying attention, not paying attention to me, not dialed into me, not dialed into my agenda, not dialed into my problems, right? Aries can really feel that Aquarius is not present. The Aquarius is going to absolutely love the Aries body, the Aries is uh, physical fitness, the Aries like goal setting agenda and ambition and the guts and the glory and uh, how well the Aries can just get through a to-do list. And the Aquarius is gonna have just a ton of friends and loves talking to anyone, cats, dogs, grandparents, kids, babies, it doesn't matter, aunts, uncles, moms, dads, any, age, any ages, and uh, strangers and ugly people and also absolutely gorgeous people. And by the way, they're not that affected by gorgeous, they're affected by stimulating conversation. They're affected by the mind. Anyways, they are very socially adept and that can trigger an Aries. Aries can get a little jealous and it can be kind of unnerving. So if Aries can tamp down its emotions, they're very passionate people. I mean, just very passionate people. And if, if the Aquarius isn't so detached and into other friendships and can pay enough attention to Aries needs, it could work. But if Aries gets really hot headed, Aquarius just saunters like a cool cat and they just saunter away like dust in the wind. Do you remember that song? <laughs> Aries can also kind of manipulate. I'll tell you, I, I don't think Aquarians really manipulate. I think they are who they are and they are like true to themselves. I'm not saying no Aquarians manipulate, but they're just not manipulative creatures. What they'll do is they'll, they'll, they'll trick or deceive by not telling a full truth, by holding a lot in. But you know, Aries, if they, if they try to manipulate the Aquarius, the Aquarius just shrugs and moves on. They don't have time for games. And the hardest part of this connection is, um, as an Aries, um, having only one at life through a strong will and an ability to fight for things that they believe in and being a warrior and picking themselves up again only after they've been killed over and over and over. I mean, Aries are some of the strongest people in the world. Well, that has helped them create very a very strong ego 
and they are very attached to their ego. It's not a bad thing. It's what's kept you alive. It's what's given you nine lives, right? But, and you wouldn't have survived, you know, yesterday, today, or tomorrow if you didn't have a strong ego because life is, life throws, throws things at you like it doesn't necessarily throw to other people, Aries. But Aquarians are very detached from ego. Aquarians are very impersonal and Aries is very personal. And so you both need kind of a dash of what the other person has. So this can be one of the best combinations of the Zodiac if you guys are willing to grow beyond yourselves. So Aries has to, has to make it be get a little bit more of a global vision and a global agenda outside of themselves and Aquarius needs to get more personal and Aries has to calm down and not flip out into a rage when they don't get their way and really manage their out of control feelings so they don't scare the Aquarius off who's like I don't even know what those feelings are <laughs> Also, Aries has got to like really be okay with Aquarius being friends with everyone, like friends with everyone. They're going to walk through the grocery store and make friends with beautiful people. And Aries, you got a deal. <laughs> it's okay because they are not really um, motivated by beauty and glamour and all of that like other signs are. Yes, of course, you got to be attractive, but um, they're, they're not suckers right they're not a sucker for a gorgeous body or a sucker for they are a sucker for a brilliant mind though and i think that this um if this causes the aries too much pain and agony and anguish and suffering because aquarius is too aloof too detached and too like cool and and is like nicer to your friends than to you <laughs> they're not really but it might feel that way to you yeah then it's not going to work but i'm going to tell you this can be a soul mate connection if two people are happy if two people are healthy so tell me if you have this combination with aquarius and aries tell me tell me tell me and let me know i want to know okay aquarius with taurus this is really kind of fun so homebody taurus right who has mastered the concrete physical world who has bathed their house in creature comforts right um and and they just understand the physical world better than most they really can help aquarius up their material game um help them with their bank account and they can uh, i mean aquarius doesn't even really have a good vacuum probably or uh a decent set of dish cookware <laughs> So Taurus, if you don't mind loaning your cookware, right, and your soft fuzzy blankets and your scented candles, and <laughs> I mean, Aquarius just does not have a need for any of that. They do like to have a creative space. They do like to have their space express themselves, but they just don't need a ton of creature comforts. And Aquarians love the non-attachment approach to life and Taurus loves possessions and uh, if Taurus loves you then you are their possession and Aquarians don't want to be possessed so you're gonna see that Aquarians see love as an idea or love as a concept and they will imagine it and they will think about it and Taurus will firmly define what love is through the pragmatic details of life how Taurus is going to show you what love should look like, feel like, taste like, and be like every single day. In Aquarius, it's sort of in the mind. So, and food might be a problem in this relationship, especially if the Aquarius is eating weird things for dinner. <laughs> I once met this Aquarian and uh, I wanted to have dinner together and I said come on over and we can have dinner together and he told me that he was on a new diet and uh, he was eating yogurt and sunflower seeds for dinner and I was just like this is not gonna work <laughs> I need sauce, I need noodles, I need carbs, you know, I need a thousand spices in my food and it's got to be cooked with, you know, delicious garlic. Yeah. So Aquarians love ideas. Taurus likes concrete 
plans. Aquarians love the future, tomorrow, tomorrow, tomorrow. And Tauruses just long for, they just suck on the past and the nostalgia that comes with it. So this is a real stalemate relationship. And this relationship, I'm gonna tell you, comes with a warning label. It does, yeah. It's gonna be hard. Tell me if you are, Taurus, involved with an Aquarian and do you have any other signs that go well with Aquarius? Like, how does it work? Tell us, tell us, tell us. Okay, Aquarius with Gemini. So Aquarius with Gemini, this is a soulmate connection. This is, this is one of the very best connections of the Zodiac. They both love the mind. They both love talking. They both love learning. They both love exploring ideas. And uh, the Gemini is adaptable. Aquarius is fixed. Gemini is adaptable. They're mutable. So they can deal with all the unpredictable, crazy, wacky, zany energy that Aquarius brings. And they can deal with insanity better than any other sign. Gemini's can, that is. Uh, maybe, maybe it's because they are a little insane. <laughs> I love you, Gemini's. I love you so much. You know that I love you. But they, you know, they're always in two different places at one time. And so the insanity of an Aquarian is nothing for them. Absolutely nothing. They kind of like it. <laughs> so they can deal with that part of Aquarian better than anybody else in the entire Zodiac. And Gemini doesn't get mad at Aquarius for dropping the ball or changing the plans or having another, you know, brilliant whacked out idea that just turns into something genius. If you haven't seen my madness and genius of the Aquarius rising, go watch it because it is really, really good. But Gemini is one sign that can actually get Aquarius to listen. And Aquarius has found its mental match. Mm -hmm. It's checkmate with these two and I love it. And they both need it because they love intellectual and mental challenges. So Aquarius ends up respecting Gemini and Gemini sees the genius in Aquarius. And uh, Gemini's key to the Aquarius heart is to make the Aquarian play again, to stop being so serious, to have fun and laugh. And there's this, there's this shared enthusiasm for the social aspect of life. And they both make friends so easily. And they both have their own independence, which creates an interdependence. And there's this ease and mutual love between the two of them. And this is for sure a soulmate connection. Are you an Aquarius in love with a Gemini or vice versa? Tell us, tell us, tell us, tell us all. What does it feel like? And what's hard about it, if anything? Okay, I hope you all are going to come to my sexy Kazemi bingo party. You got to dress up. Be cute. <laughs> Doll up for me. We are going to have a blast and we're giving away all those prizes. But I really want you to come to my live streams where we'll talk about um, the astrology in your chart in more detail. And my next one, if you weren't able to join on November 20th, um, my next one is on December 11th at 2 p.m. And then uh, for super supporters, if you are a super supporter, I love you. Thank you. Thank you. I have the best group of people. I'm sending you so much love and so many hugs. I hope you loved all your free perks. Um, there's just tons of stuff that you get as a super supporter. So if you're not, just go check the notes below and you can hit the join button. And for 25 cents a day, you can be a super supporter. You get so many free perks. You get your deep dive natal chart. You get your horoscope based on your chart for an entire year. You get your dynamite day. Uh, it goes on and on in all my secret videos. But for super supporters, 4 p.m., on December 18th. For December 11th, that's for everybody. That's at two o'clock in the afternoon Pacific time. I live in the Seattle area. So December 11th, 2 p.m. YouTube live stream for everybody um, Pacific time. December 18th, just for super supporters. That's exclusive. We go a little bit deeper and that's at 4 p.m. And then January 1st for everyone at 2 p.m. I hope you'll come to that. And then January 15th, for super supporters at 4 p.m. Write this down. Mark your calendar. Let's be together. We're going to have so much fun, and I'm going to teach you how to read your chart. February 5th at 2 p.m. for everybody, and February 19th for my super supporters, again, at 4 p.m. So when it's for everybody, it's at 2, super supporters, it's at 4 
Pacific time here in Seattle. Okay, Aquarius with Cancer, we gotta go, we gotta go. Okay, now listen to this. Hard relationships and hard combinations can actually work. This is the combination of my parents. So uh, my mom was married uh, to my dad who passed away and she's a Cancer and he was a Gemini. It can work. And my stepdad who came into my life when I was 10 years old is an Aquarius and my mom's a Cancer. Um, and they, uh, you know, uh, my my stepdad, his name's Jack, he's wonderful, I love him dearly. He's an Aquarius with Sag rising, so we get along really well. But um, he always said that uh, he and my mom are just like a fine wine, where they age better over time. And so uh, there were some hard times, I won't lie. They're, they're, these two personalities are very, it's very difficult to get along. If you're an Aquarius with a Cancer, you gotta want this relationship really bad because it's a very hard combination. But combinations can work. And if you have the same moons or you got moon signs that are in harmony, it's really, really good. You can almost hang your hat on the moon signs. Almost, not quite. But if you have good moon signs, you have a really good chance of, so if you have an Aquarius moon, you need to be re watching this. But, um, you know, Aquarians are just, uh, they're such lovely people and they are easier to get along with than most. But let's talk about Cancers. Cancers come from the heart and they cannot separate from their heart. And Aquarians, as you know, come from the mind and they cannot separate from the mind. They don't know how to be mushy. They have to learn how to be mushy. Cancers are not mushy in the beginning, but they feel mushy all the time. They just reveal it very slowly. And uh, Aquarians have a very hard time sorting through their own emotions, let alone the Cancer's emotions. So Cancers are going to demand that Aquariuses learn how to feel if they don't already know how. Learn how to share their emotions. Learn how to reveal their vulnerabilities. Learn how to open up their heart and talk about their feelings. Cancers are sensitive and they need Aquarius's feedback. They need feedback. And if the Aquarian can't give feedback, then it's probably not going to work. If the Aquarian can't emotionally grow, this is probably not going to work. Um, and if I could just tell you about my 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 dad Jack, my stepdad Jack, I'll tell you at 60 years old, he completely evolved. And so I'm telling you, this can happen late in life. It it's you know that adage like old. Uh, old dogs never learn new tricks. It's not necessarily true. And he is satirizing. So he had the ability to have a new outlook and a new perspective because he's mutable. But if you're not willing to grow, this is going to be a hard relationship. And if cancers aren't willing to like toughen up a little bit, it won't work. So cancers need that emotional feedback. They need, they need deep, warm closeness and connectedness. And cancers need someone who will talk through all their emotional needs that come up. But Aquarians want to talk about big picture ideas and concepts and theories. And they like speculation and they're statisticians on the inside. They like to know, you know, who's winning the race and they, they like to understand every single space on the Rubik's Cube where Cancer's not even interested in an Rubik's Cube. So this can become an exhausting relationship for Aquariuses. And this can be a very um, like vacant relationship for Cancers. Aquarians end up consoling the feelings of the Cancer and Cancers end up over giving, over loving the Aquarian trying to teach them how to connect, trying to teach them what love looks like, how to love, and it can work, but there are challenges. So I call this a stalemate unless you sprinkle a lot of magic into the potion. Aquarius is with Leos. Okay, this is not necessarily an easy relationship. This is opposites attract. So the other person has what you don't have. So, uh, you know, I know that both Leos and Aquarians love challenges. And if you love a good challenge, 
try this relationship. And if you have this relationship, leave me a comment below and let me know what are the what are your tips and tricks. So Leo is passion galore. And when I say passion galore, I mean they're like Sagittarius's where uh, it seems sometimes like everything carries the same weight. Like uh oh something like you borrowed my sweater to there's a fire in the kitchen. They both carry the same weight. So Leos are dramatic that way. That's what I mean by passion. Everything is full throttle. So they're in sort of um, a, a hyper mode all the time. It's very hard for a Leo to totally relax. They can do it, but everything they feel, they feel with a great deal of intensity, which is passion. They're like Sagittarius's and Aries that way. But I'll tell you that I think that Aquarians love and admire that passion that Leos have, and they kind of want a piece of it, but they don't know how to get it. And Leo will show the Aquarian the power of the roar, the roar in life, just roar. You know, Aquarius just doesn't have that naturally. Um, Aquarius is is very cool cat. They are like the cool observer. <laughs> and Leo is in it, you know. Leo um, feels special. And Aquarians <clears throat> have felt alienated. They feel alien and alone a lot of the time. They're liked. They're popular. They can mix and mingle. But they feel alone down deep inside. And Leo feels special. And Aquarians want to feel special. And so Leo can make an Aquarian feel so, so special, like they have never felt before. So the Aquarian is this quiet observer, and Leos kind of take that for like coolness, right? Like, wow, they don't sweat. They don't have anxiety. They don't get upset. They don't have the kind of passion, passionate outburst that Leo does. So Leo sees that as a strength and admires it. They like that strong, silent type. So Leo loves someone who doesn't grovel. And Aquarians, oh my God, they do not grovel. Have you ever met an Aquarian that grovels? If they do, you cast a spell on them. I'm telling you right now, Aquarians don't grovel. They would rather walk away than grovel. They will divorce. They will leave the country. They will leave you. They will walk away before they beg you. And Leos don't really grovel either, by the way. But Leo loves someone who doesn't grovel because Leo is used to some of their fans groveling but not Aquarian. Nope, 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 no thank you. And uh, Leo kind of has a love-hate relationship with someone who can tell them no thank you. Like, they hate it, but they admire it. But they hate it, but they love it. But they hate it, and how dare you? And, you know, and it's like, if you tell a Leo no thanks, they're just like, what is your problem? All this? And you're saying, you're saying no to all this? <laughs> and Aquarian's like, yeah, I'm, I'm busy. I'm, 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 uh, they're probably playing a video game. I don't know what they're doing. They're doing something that I guarantee you is not nearly as important as you. <laughs> and Leo's like, what? How dare you? Anyways, they hate that, but that's what ultimately gets them. And that's why this relationship can actually work as crazy as that is. But, you know, Aquarians are generous to humanity. And Leos are generous to loved ones. And so if they can mix this two together, they can become a very generous and very powerful, I, I should say a very generous and a very loving power couple. Yes. So mix the sciences, Aquarius, with the arts, and you have a brainiac creative couple. Leo is the kind that is all or nothing. And Aquarians kind of like the discovery phase, you know, they kind of like, okay, one more day. Let's see if it's good. Okay. Let's see. After about, you know, Leos are kind of done with the discovery phase after about three days. They either, they're black and white. I either know you uh, by now and I love you or I don't. So that could get messy. So this could be a real soulmate if both want to stretch, but only if they can get through the stalemate. Yeah. 
Okay, so Virgos need a job. They need to be needed and they like to be in service and they try real, real hard in their relationships. Um, Virgos don't really love quirks. They, they do like kink, but they don't like quirks. <laughs> Some of them do. They like things to be sort of perfect and they believe that the devil is in the details. And this can really bog down the Aquarius's free spirit. I mean, Aquarius just does not do really well with a lot of rules and regulations. And so Aquarius will make up the rules as they go. And Virgo brings this agenda and these expectations to the table because they're goal oriented. Um, they usually have like a mission to accomplish and they don't quit until the mission is accomplished. And so Aquarius is sort of like a more freewheeling ride just to see where it goes and where it ends up. Um, and they just do one thing at a time in the moment. Um, and uh, they don't always like having an agenda placed on them. Virgo talks about problems and solutions, and they love to talk about that. And so they need somebody who is sympathetic, sensitive, thoughtful, and empathetic to create solutions that really uh, are workable. And Aquarians love finding solutions, but they don't like, and this is where we go a little bit deeper than most, Aquarians are good at that, um, finding solutions. The thing is, is they don't like looking at problems. They don't like dwelling in the muck and the guck, gook and the guck and the messy and the, you know, the ishy squishy part of the problems. And so Virgo is looking for safety and security and stability. And Aquarians are wondering, what is that? <laughs> That's no fun. So this one is a stalemate. Let's move on to Libra. So Aquarius is with Libra. They're both smart. They both love people. They're both sociable. And they are both so easy to make friends with. They are intellectual and they are both brilliant. And their brilliant minds is what bonds them. But Libra is so focused on all things beautiful. I would not be wearing this outfit for my Libra video, by the way. <laughs> they wouldn't want to listen to me. They'd go, next. <laughs> I think only an Aquarian would li <laughs> do, listen, appreciate me um, with my with my little four leaf clover. It's actually a three leaf clover. I got this in um, Whistler. Has anybody seen these hats in that fa fun bar, that fun Irish bar in Whistler? What's it called? I forget what it's called. I've danced there all night long, numerous times. I forget now, but I love it. These are all in the back. They're handmade by a lady. I have two different colors. Uh, anyways, this is like my favorite gift I've ever gotten. Um, and it's Seattle cold now, so I'm wearing it. Libra is so deeply focused on all things beautiful and love and harmony and how to make them, how to make harmony and beauty even more so, like how do you up your game with beauty? And Aquarians see beauty from energy and Aquarians see beauty very differently than Libras. Aquarians are not into classical beauty, Libras are. And uh, Libras can be fickle and they can get stuck in between two opposing sides and they can succumb to other people's wishes just for harmony's sake, just to please others. And Aquarius gets annoyed, can't even do it with selling out to, to people please. They just won't do it. So Libra's need for harmony is, you know, makes Libra sometimes seek out the approval of others and twist into a pretzel to please others, where Aquarius doesn't even have time for the niceties and uh, doesn't want an education on good manners. And so this combination, even though they're both air signs and all the books will say, oh, this is a great combination. Not really, uh, not so much. Libra is ruled by Venus and Aquarius is ruled by Uranus, which is the higher mental octave. And so um, I think Libra would find it refreshing that they don't have to get all dolled up, all beautiful, make everything all harmonious and perfect for an Aquarian. Like they might really take sanctuary in that. Like, wow, I don't have to try that hard. My Aquarian's just so damn cool. But um, Aquarian is 
going to be a turnoff if they're just not refined enough or if they don't understand the value of beauty at all or if they're not interested in harmony and if an Aquarian can learn to harmonize and enjoy in shared experiences not just you know enjoy their own company and if Libra can learn to enjoy their own company a little bit more and be secure without getting a high level of approval from Aquarius because Aquarius just approves already and if they didn't they'd say so so if they're not saying anything then they approve they they say something when they disapprove so this could turn out to be amazing but I'm gonna say this could be a friend mate turn soulmate so if you guys are healthy and can work on it it can work okay Aquarius with Scorpio Scorpio attaches once they're in hard to get them in but once they're in they're 1000 percent in and Aquarius just can't go to the depths of the hot molten lava soul that Aquarius lives at they just can't go there it's overwhelming and and uh, Aquarius needs separation to breathe and Scorpio just is in the suffering and in the agony uh, to a far higher degree the temperature in the Scorpio's oven is you know we're cooking at like 2020 degrees and the Aquarius oven is like well it's like minus 200 <laughs> so just think this the Scorpio is can be very overwhelming for this Aquarius because they just feel things so deeply and uh, the Aquarius needs space and detachment to breathe and uh, you know I feel like Scorpio could get really paranoid and jealous and want to put a tracker on their Aquarian like who are you talking to now who's texting you in the middle of the night is that really just a friend that's not a friend uh, uh I know you want to sleep with everyone you want to sleep with everyone that you talk to no they actually don't Scorpios vet their lovers I mean they lay down obstacle courses they're full of tests they want to see if their partner is loyal enough engaged enough sexually good enough deep enough and I'm sorry this is going to be so hard on Aquarius's nerves this is just going to be so hard I'm not saying it can't be done especially if the Scorpio has other you know soulmate planets and other soulmate signs um, it can work especially if your Scorpio has some Sagittarius in it but the Aquarius you know gets along effortlessly with Sag and Gemini so if your Scorpio is Gemini rising that's so helpful but if not oh my god this is gonna be like trying to win the Olympics I mean this is gonna be hard good luck with this I'd love to hear I would love to hear from some successful partnerships with this combination how did you do it what did you do what works what didn't work what was hard please tell us let's build a community for our Aquarians and let's help them out and tell them by the way please subscribe please subscribe to my channel I'm trying to get to 40,000 subscribers and I hope you'll become a super supporter too if you want to learn astrology um, want to learn more and go deep 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 come be a super supporter you get so many big perks okay Aquarius with Sagittarius personally I think this is the best alchemy of the entire zodiac these people are seriously meant for each other both are big thinkers both thrive on freedom both are very independent both both are pretty optimistic and uh, both love people all kinds of people every kind of person both love learning and uh, one leans more towards stats statistics and science and um, the eclectic arts if you will and the other Sagittarius leans more towards philosophy and psychology and global sociology but the two of them meet in this sweet sweet succulent spot both love faraway places and the mind 
on the global scale. They love new things. They love unpredictability. They are both super spontaneous and they both love sharing ideas, dreaming up plans, and every day is like a wild ride. This is like Mr. Toad's wild ride. And this is an awesome, awesome relationship. This is an adventure of a lifetime. And this is someone who Sagittarius will actually be loyal to. Yeah. Okay, so Aquarians with Capricorns. So the unconventional and zany ways of Aquarius have got to seriously bug the ambitious, serious-minded, rule-following Capricorns. Capricorns have to do it kind of in a certain way. And Capricorn sees Aquarians as theoretical. And Aquarians see Capricorns as pragmatic and structured, if not boring. I'm not saying Capricorns are. It's just that the Capricorns seem so structured and so rigid and so goal-oriented um, that it is hard for Aquarians to adapt to that kind of mindset. Capricorns, they don't like to future trip like Aquarians do. Aquarians are always about tomorrow and the next vision and the next dream and the next goal and the next idea. And Capricorns, I mean, they will do that if it's about building up their bank account, building up their business, their assets, plotting out, climbing the ladder to success, right? And Aquariuses are unpredictable and they like it that way. And Capricorns think that Aquarius feels like ungrounded, unreliable. It's not true, but they feel that way in comparison. And so they they don't like that unrooted feeling. Um, they don't want a drifter with no stable plan, right? And I'm not saying Aquarians are all like that, but if you don't have earth in your chart, they're going to feel this way um, about you. So it's, it's it's not true that Capricorns are boring and just that, but they do run their lives with this like ethical standard trying to always reach that next goal. And that next goal, it usually requires a tremendous amount of work. Capricorns oftentimes are workaholics um, and Aquarians are not really. And so the Capricorn doesn't really uh, respect that about Aquarians. Capricorn can see Aquarius is so smart, but they wonder if they're so smart, why don't they turn their intelligence into cold, hard cash? Like if they're so smart, why are they not also so damn rich? <laughs> so Capricorns can't really feel secure with Aquarians and Aquarians can't remember all of the Capricorn rules that they need to follow. <laughs> also, did I tell you guys? I don't think I've told you, but we're doing parties. If you guys want to book a birthday party, a holiday party, a girl's night out party, any kind of party, just contact me at soulnavigation1111 at gmail.com and we are doing virtual parties for your group of friends of any size. We can do tarot card parties. We can even channel your crossed over loved ones and do a medium party, mediumship party. Um, we, we can do uh, an astrology party. Just contact me and uh, our rates are so affordable right now. It is so much fun. We are having a blast. I hope that you've already met my team at Team Soul Navigation, soulnavigation.com, and um, we would love to do a party for you. If you want one, just email me and send me the details. Okay, we are going to talk now about Aquariuses with Aquariuses. Oh my gosh, these are best friends, soulmates, and ideal companions. This is such a great combination. Like I don't always necessarily two Virgos get along or two Capricorns get along, but two Aquarians, yes, yes, and yes. There's brilliant talks and brilliant discoveries and no one wants to rein the other partner in. And you know, kids are optional, marriage is optional, buying a house is optional, dinner is optional, like nothing's mandatory between these two. And they just have a blast. They are riveted with each other. They are intellectually passionate about everything together. You know, 
talks about the universe that lasts all night underneath the stars or by the fireplace. Curiosity is matched with this combination. There is so much mutual interest and discovery and speculations and the curiosities about the magic of life. And there's this unbridled enthusiasm. And this is one of the most awesome soulmate connections that there is in the entire zodiac. Okay, Aquarians with Pisces. This can be one of the hardest and one of the best matches. This has a lot of contradiction and it really, really depends on the two people. But I give it friend mate that can end up soulmate. Um, if the Pisces is too sensitive, let's just forget it right now. Let's don't even try. Like, why put anybody through that hell? <laughs> but, but, um, I didn't want to write it off at that because not every Pisces just is an emotional, you know, a, a highly emotional creature that can't manage their emotions. Not every Pisces is like that. But if you are too sensitive, the Aquarian will just ice you over and it won't be good. The chances are that most Pisces have, a, have some Aquarius in their charts or Aries energy. And if you have either energy on either side of your sign, this relationship can really, really be brilliant. So um, this connection is a little bit like an Alice in Wonderland acid trip. <laughs> it makes me kind of want to be an Aquarian and a Pisces, doesn't it? But I mean, this combination goes out there and then out there some more and then out there into the ethers of like way out there. I can't even imagine what it would be like, but I think it would be a whole lot of fun. I think it could be more fun than what an earthbound human can even conjure up. Pisces and Aquariuses have, have, they're going to structure their relationship like, gosh, we just had a great moment. Let's have another moment. Wow, we just had another great moment. Let's have another great moment. Wow, we just had another great moment. So there's not a lot of structure to it. It's just one good time after another after another, and soon you find yourself accidentally, whoopsie, I'm in a relationship with you because I call you every single day. <laughs> Pisces is the poet and Aquarius is the unconventional dreamer and both are visionaries. Both can see the big picture. If Pisces can just get a grip on their emotions just a little bit and rein in their sensitivities, this could be really something special. Pisces needs to remember that Aquarius is detached to survive and it's inside the separation, it's inside the space that they become most attracted. Pisces has to remember that it's not because Pisces did something wrong. It's just literally the nature of Aquarius. Also, Pisces has to like not give in this relationship and they have to refrain from overgiving. But I really want to say they have to like not give because they're not giving is still probably giving too much. <laughs> they are over givers. And if they're going to overgive, they are going to just kill off this relationship. So Aquarius just needs bare bones. Seriously, if you show up with bread and water and lay it by their door, by their bedroom door outside on a tray, they're happy. They feel loved. <laughs> They don't need much. <laughs> An Aquarian really doesn't need much. Like you could buy them something really cool at the thrift store for $2.99, wrap it up in some fancy bag so they think it's more. They don't even care. You don't even need the fancy bag. Let me do that over. Let me do that over. You could give them a recycled gift if it was thoughtful they wouldn't care. They wouldn't care that you didn't spend any money on it. You could buy them something at the thrift store that was really cool, that you saw their little essence of them in. They would love it. So don't overgive, Pisces. Don't overgive. You could write them a song. They would love it. And Aquarius needs to learn how to be more thoughtful for Pisces. Aquarius needs to learn how to slow down and mellow out and chill and hold on to their Pisces. They need to learn how to savor the soul of a Pisces. This one, I'm going to give friend mate to soul mate. And I hope so much 
you loved this video. I had so much fun doing it for you. So tell me, leave me a comment below and share my video with any Aquariuses that you know and let me know which sign would you like me to do next. I can't wait. Go check out soulnavigation.com. All my readers and book a reading right now. We have totally affordable rates and also my aura quartz crystal necklaces are all on sale for black friday i can't wait to see you at my next live stream and we're gonna have so much fun subscribe ring the bell and come to my sexy astrology kazemi bingo party on december 5th bye for now